Uh, this lecture is about subsequences in the balzano weierstrass theorem, and we'll work in some other amazing stuff along the way. Uh, let's begin. Uh, first, I want to define what we mean by subsequences. Uh, let x sub n be a sequence, and suppose that we have a function phi from the natural numbers to the natural numbers that is an increasing function. Uh, this means that whenever n is bigger than m, then phi of n is bigger than phi of m. Now set uh, the notation n sub k is equal to phi of k for every k. Then uh, x uh, the, the sequence x in k is said to be a subsequence of x n. Now, uh, basically, you know, th this is we have to state it in this technical mathematical language so we'll have the, the linguistic constructs around uh, when we're, we get to proofs. Uh, intuitively what this means is we, a subsequence is when we thin down a sequence by just forgetting some of its terms. It just keeps going forever and ever um, but we'll be wiping out uh, some of its terms, maybe an infinite number of terms, maybe a finite number of terms, but there will always be terms of the original sequence left, however far out you go. All right. Um, the balzano weierstrass theorem says that every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. Okay. So, we can easily think of sequences that that, uh, that are bounded and don't converge. This says that we can thin any bounded sequence down to something that converges. Okay, and so we're going to begin our proof here by creating a nested sequence of intervals. Okay, so we are of course going to apply the nested interval principle. Okay. Uh, let xn be a sequence and suppose that there are real numbers a1 less than b1 so that a1 is less than xn is less than b1 for all n. Th this is just saying, okay, it's bounded, which we were given in our hypothesis. Uh, we will now proceed to create a list of natural numbers n sub 1 less than n sub 2, etc., and a nested set of intervals. Uh, a1, b1 contains a2, b2, and so forth as follows. Uh, let n sub 1 equal 1, and let m be the midpoint of x1, b1. Uh, then the original sequence x1, xn will, will visit uh, at least one of the intervals a1 to m or m to b1 an infinite number of times, right? It might in fact visit both of them an infinite number of times. It might bop back and forth, but it will visit at least one of them an infinite number of times. Now, let a2, b2, uh, the, the one of the intervals that uh, the sequence visits an infinite number of times and let n sub 2 be the smallest integer greater than uh, n sub 1 such that x n sub 2 is an element of that interval a2 b2. Okay. Now, so what we're going to do is now process this down the line. So say we have an interval that contains infinitely many uh, values of our sequence. Okay. Uh, cut it in half and choose the half that the sequence visits infinitely often. Uh, take x uh, take n sub k sub 1 to be the least element of n uh, of the natural numbers that's greater than n sub k such that uh, x sub n sub k plus 1 is in that interval. And so we can go on doing this forever each time getting an interval that's half as big as it was before. So, by the now familiar argument, there is a unique value c that is common to all of those intervals we constructed. 
uh, we claim that uh, uh, the subsequence we constructed x in sub k converges to c. Well, let uh, epsilon greater than zero be given, so we're challenged with an epsilon. Choose k to be large enough so the length of x sub k is less than epsilon. Note that since c is in a k b k, it follows that uh, the closed interval uh, a k b k is in c minus epsilon to c plus epsilon. Now suppose that little k is bigger than uh, uh, capital K. So we would have uh, x sub n sub k, an element of a k b k, which is then an element of a big k uh, b big k, which is then, then c minus epsilon c plus epsilon. And it follows that x n k minus c is less than epsilon. So therefore, our series must converge to C. OK, uh, here we're going to prove that the open interval is not the image of a sequence. The way we state this in the proposition is by saying there is no sequence that assumes all of the values of x sub 0, uh, x, x, excuse me, of 0, 1. OK, excuse me. Uh, we will actually show the fol following. Given any sequence xn in 0, 1, there is a point that is not in that sequence. OK. So first off, uh, there is a closed interval uh, a1, b1 in 0, 1 that does not contain x1 and whose length is less than 1 half. And can, you can convince yourself of this by drawing a picture uh, if our, here in this picture I have x1 uh, falling a little bit closer to 1, I just cut the interval in half and squeeze x, a1, b1 into the other half. Um, now, uh, similarly I, I can, I can uh, uh, find a closed interval uh, a2, b2, and uh, a1, b1 uh, that's less than half of length and does not contain x2 by the same sort of argument. Okay, um, and I can the, this the bottom of this picture shows how it's it's the same way all the way down. We can keep getting these smaller intervals. Uh, a1, b1 does not contain x1, a2, b2 does not contain x2, a, k, b, k does not contain uh, x, k. Okay. So decreasing sequence of nest, uh, nested intervals by the usual arguments there is a unique real number that's common to all of these intervals. We claim that um, xn, the sequence xn, never assumes this value. Well, pick a k, then a k, a xk is not in a k, b k, but c is. Okay, therefore x cannot be equal to c for any k at all. It's done. 